Good afternoon and welcome to Lariat TV News Today. I'm Bailey Bramer. And I'm Kirstie Soto. Thanks for joining us. We begin with breaking news this morning. Baylor just released that senior lecturer in the sociology department, Randy Jacobs, passed away on Wednesday after battling with cancer. His family held a service earlier in the week. Baylor football coach Matt Rule spoke out this week about four football players who have been suspended for spring practice. Meredith Aldis has the story. On, while addressing the media on Wednesday, Matt Rule said four Baylor football players, Eric Oger, Trayvon Lewis, Justin Harris, and John Arthur, are all suspended for spring football practice for different disciplinary reasons. A report by ESPN on Tuesday indicated that three football players were suspended due to sexual assault allegations stemming from an incident in November involving members of the Baylor equestrian team. Rule said the players who were involved have been suspended but wouldn't say which of the four were involved and that the case is out of his hands. There's no, there's no hiding. It's been very transparent from this side in terms of that, but I don't know much about the case, and I think that's really a good thing because I mm -hmm. probably really shouldn't know much about it as the football coach. This is the first sexual assault allegation under Rule, who was hired following the university's fallout with head coach Art Bryles involving multiple sexual assault investigations. Rule said he is confident the investigation is being handled properly, and he didn't know much about it. There's, there's process in place here where there's a committee. Take it out of my hands, right? Like there's a committee that steps in and says, we meet, this happened, you're separated from the team. It's not Coach Rule, this is, this is a committee. Rule said the suspensions and injuries will give others an opportunity to step up. I think we have a lot of young guys that this is one of the most important springs for them in their life because they have to go out and prove that they are going to help us in the fall. Baylor will hold its annual green and gold spring game on April 21st at McLean Stadium. For Lariat TV News Today, I'm Meredith Aldis. Thousands of students walked out of classes nationwide on Wednesday to protest gun violence. Here in Waco, several high schools, including Waco High, Riker Catholic School, and Midway High School, participated in the walkout. Our reporter Christy Soto has the story. One month after the school shooting in Parkland, Florida, students nationwide marched out of school to protest gun violence and safety on campus. Locally at Midway High School, more than 300 teenagers decided to join the movement at 10 a.m. Students are protesting in silence near the front of the school behind me. They will be protesting for 17 minutes, each minute representing one life that was lost in the Florida school shooting. A handful of Midway students organized the walkout and are hoping to ignite change. We're really trying to make a change through our own voices because it has been so many times that it has failed to be the adults who do not really do anything and it's we are finally done with the um, whole idea of like just waiting for something to happen. We're wanting our senators and our representatives to hear the students out because our voices do matter and we need them to know that and realize how important our safety is. Dodson said just because they can't vote yet doesn't mean their opinions don't matter think maybe what they don't realize is once we do get a voting age that our choices will make a huge difference and if they do listen to their constituents that are under 18 it will help them in the long run. Administration approved the protest and the students right to be heard. They're also working on making changes to enhance safety on campus. Baylor could have its biggest freshman class ever next year. The school announcer is currently a wait list for those seeking to enroll in the fall of 2018. According to Baylor, this is because of the demand of prospective students and the rate at which the deposits are being received. The university says it expects a higher fall freshman enrollment for this year's incoming class. Baylor says it has received 30,000 sorry, excuse me, completed applications with seven more weeks until the May 1st deadline. Jessica King Grady, Assistant Vice President for Undergraduate Admissions and Enrollment, credits Baylor's Where the Lights Shine Bright campaign for the spike in interest. In 1981, <coughs> March became known as Women's History Month, meant to bring awareness to women's advocacy, rights, and equality. Baylor is home to several of its own dedicated and influential women, one of them being Baylor's 15th and first female president, Dr. Linda Livingstone. In addition, Baylor also has a women and gender studies minor, which has existed since 1996. Since fall of 2015, the curriculum has been updated to attract more students. There were only two minors in the program in 2015, and now there are more than 20. 
According to the Women's and Gender Studies website, the program takes an interdisciplinary approach to emphasize the contributions of women. Baylor's chapter of NAACP is taking initiative in raising awareness about mental health among Waco's youth. As a part of their week-long Mental Health Self-Care Week, members of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People have been volunteering at Waco ISD's Indian Spring Middle School. They hosted a yoga night Tuesday and a hip-hop night on Wednesday, both to promote healthy ways to cope with stress among Waco's youth. Dallas junior Christian Williams, Kristen Williams, pardon me, is president of the local NAACP and said the goal of the Mental Health Week is to start conversations about the importance of the issue in addition to helping kids develop techniques to improve their mental health on a daily basis. How often do you get over to the silos, Christy? Not that much. I can't seem to escape the crowd over there. Last year alone, they recorded over 1.6 million people visited the silos. That's, That's pretty crazy. Yeah, that, I was just about to say that. That's <laughs> so crazy. Well, let me tell you, this weekend they're expecting 70,000 people at the silos for their event, Spring at the Silos. Find out more when we come back. Well, to me, it's home. home. Everyone's there to help you and to see you succeed. Challenging. Challenging. You're like, I'm here. I can do this. Friends. Friendship. Relationships. There's people that know you and people that are there for you around every corner. It's the shared experience. Rigorous. Growth. Transformative. Tradition. Tradition. Faith. Faith. I've loved every second of it. It's family. It's home. It's Baylor. An estimated 70,000 tourists from Waco and around the country are expected to visit Magnolia Market this weekend, according to the Waco Convention and Visitors Bureau. The number of tourists visiting Waco has increased about 320% from 2014 to 2017, and the numbers of visitors are projected to continue growing. Magnolia Market is a big reason for the spike in tourism, and it's hosting its annual Spring at the Silos event this weekend. Because of the event running through Saturday, parts of 4th Street and Webster Avenue will be blocked off downtown. Visitors can shop from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. When is the last time you got a full eight hours of sleep? Baylor professor of neuroscience and psychology, Dr. Michael Scullin, has some advice for you about making sleep a priority. According to Scullin, sleeping for eight hours a night is crucial. He found that students who slept eight hours performed about five points higher on their final exam than students who were not getting enough sleep. Technology use before falling asleep can also have a negative impact on one's sleeping patterns. The National, the, nation, the National Sleep Foundation recommends that individuals avoid using technology at least an hour before going to bed. Skillen suggests making a to-do list before turning in for the night could help you fall asleep faster. As part of the Counseling Center's expansion in 2016, Baylor hired an eating disorder specialist and increased its resources available to students who struggle with food-related conditions. Students at Baylor have the opportunity to meet with eating disorder specialist Erin McGinty, as well as nurse practitioner and a dietitian. Another resource available to students is a support group, which meets once a week and does not require a prior meeting with McGinty, but does require a screening process. According to the National Eating Disorder Association, the number of college students with eating disorders has risen from 23% to 32% among females and from 7.9% to 25% among males as of 2013. If you or someone you know is struggling with an eating disorder, help is available through the Baylor Counseling Center. 314 was the date this Wednesday, but it's also the number for the mass symbol Pi. One fraternity wanted to take Pi Day and make it a little sweeter on campus. Riley Seavers has the story. Eat some pies. Baylor's chapter of Beta Theta Pi was true to its name on March 14th and celebrated Mathematical Pi Day with Pi. The fraternity hosted a pie eating contest and contestants had five minutes to eat their pie without using their hands. Students also submitted pies to the pie baking contest. Entries were judged by a panel of three judges, which included Baylor basketball superfan Hayden Johnson, baseball head coach Steve Rodriguez, and first gent Brad Livingstone. Sam Rojas said the event was the first of its kind and all proceeds will benefit Beta Theta Pi's philanthropy Mission Waco. The idea is that it'll become an annual thing and every 314 will have a pie day. Reporting for Larry at TV News Today, I'm Riley Seavers. It's the time of year for yearbook photos. Today and next week you'll have the opportunity to get your picture snap for the 2017-2018 school year. 
Underclassmen and seniors will be able to get their picture taken Friday, March 16th, and March 20th through the 23rd. The photos will be taken in the sub den. Seniors have the option to get yearbook pictures taken next week, and they're required to wear their Sunday vest. Check the Lariat website for schedules, but don't miss out. In order to get a yearbook, email your name and Baylor ID to roundup at baylor.edu or online via BearWeb. The yearbooks cost $80 and will be charged to your student account. If you're looking for something else to do this weekend and don't want to hit the madness at the silos, we've got March Madness right here in Waco. Don't forget our Lady Bears are taking on Grambling State tonight at the Ferrell Center at 6.30. When we come back, Branson has sports. It's not just a school to me, it's home. home. Everyone's there to help you and to see you succeed. Challenging. Challenging. You're like, I'm here, I can do this. Friends. Friendship. Relationships. There's people that know you and people that are there for you around every corner. It's the shared experience. Rigorous. Growth. Transformative. Tradition. Tradition. Faith. Faith. I've loved every second of it. It's family. It's home. It's Baylor. The second seeded and second ranked Baylor women's basketball team is starting the big dance Friday night inside the Farrell Center, taking on 15th seeded Grambling State. Right now it's now and never for us, and especially for me. And you know, now that Christy's out, it'll be a nice gift for her, for us to make it to the Final Four, and her to be able to come back and watch us play. And ever since I've been here, the Elite Eight's been a hurdle, and this year I think we can cross that obstacle. The 2018 NCAA tournament action for the Lady Bears will begin 30 minutes following the conclusion of the first round game between 7th seeded Michigan and 11th seeded Northern Colorado, which will be held at the Farrell Center as well. In the national tournament, number one seeded Baylor men's basketball team will take on number four seeded Mississippi State Sunday at the Farrell Center. The Bears are coming off an 80 to 59 opening round win over Wagner on Tuesday to move to 11 and one in the NIT under head coach Scott Drew. Two Baylor players were hurt in the win. Junior guard Jake Lindsey injured his hip and freshman forward Tristan Clark hurt his foot. Drew said both players are tough and would play if they were just dinged up. If the Bears win on Sunday, they will face the winner of number two seed Louisville and number three seed Middle Tennessee at the Farrell Center. Baylor baseball has a big weekend ahead of them as they open Big 12 play against number six Texas Tech. The Bears lost earlier this week to Sam Houston State but will look to put that loss behind them as they face the Red Raiders in a three-game series. Baylor will lean on sophomores Andy Thomas and Shay Langoliers to provide the team with strong hitting performances to lead them past the Red Raiders. The first game of the series is Friday at 6.35 at Baylor Ballpark. The 11th ranked Baylor softball team failed to add on to an early lead this Wednesday and wound up losing to Texas State 5-2, snapping their 18-game non-conference home win streak. Jessie Scrogans went two for four with a run scored, pushing her career multi-hit game total up to 68, just one off the program record set by Naomi Fitzgerald, who had 69 back in 2001. Baylor will enjoy a rare weekend off and match up against North Texas on Tuesday at Getterman Stadium. And that's sports for this Friday. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week.